Good morning, everybody, and good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I know you guys are all over the place. Really, really glad to see you all here today. There's a ton of people in there. Do me a favor, and if you would, type in there if you can hear me, and you're going to see my screen go down for just a second, because I want to see that if you guys can hear me. So just, you know, type in, and put in there where you're from, too. Love to know that, where you're from. That would be very cool if you would do that for me. Okay, Linda, Stephanie says they can hear me. That's a good thing. Marissa's from Canada. Cool, Ron in Chicago. Hey, Ron, how you doing? One of my coaching students right there, great guy. Uh, Victoria's in Virginia. David, hear you in Boulder, Colorado. Stephanie's in Cleveland. We've got a lot of people in the U.S. today. Normally, we have people all around the world. Judith is in the Bronx in New York. Got some good pizza there, Judith. I got to get back there real soon. Wayne from Baker's at Bakersfield. I can't see that one, Jessica. William, Bill Branson, James in Upper Marlboro, and Maryland. Okay, cool, James. I used to live in uh, Virginia Beach area. Actually, it was in Chesapeake, so not, not too far from you there. Awesome. So does everybody feel good today, tonight, tomorrow, wherever you're at? And I say tomorrow, I, you know, I have a, a new employee we're hiring in the Philippines, and she's 15 hours ahead of me. Uh, we have a business partner we're making some plans with now, and he's in Malaysia. And I think that's about 15, 16 hours different. So we got some really cool stuff planned today. Um, I would suggest you take some notes today. And don't let me forget, this, is, this sounds insane, but I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the secret to success at the end of this webinar today. Hey, Jessica, you want to say hello? Hello, everybody. Glad you're here. So there's Jessica over there. And if you got any questions, you can type them in. She's going to be answering those for you. Well, that's pretty bold, right? I'm going to give you the secret to success in this little tiny webinar today that you didn't even pay anything to show up for. How about that? That's pretty cool, right? I must have other stuff that has good value. Then, huh? All right, so let's get moving here. We're going to be talking about 10 times in your Facebook ad spend. Now, Jessica said to me, well, that's easy. Just spend 10 times as much. No, that's not what I meant, in case any of you thought that. And if any of you thought that and you showed up for a webinar on how to learn how to spend 10 times as much money, well, come on, that's insane. You can't do that, right? Now, what we're talking about, obviously, is how to get 10 times back what you spend, which is the whole goal. Um, and I'm going to give you some ways to do that that you may not be thinking about. You may think it's your ad. You may think it's your offer. You may think it's your image. It's none of that. That's not how you're going to do it. So I want to jump right in here and show you how to do that. So if you want to know the number one way to be successful on Facebook ads, do what works. Okay, webinar over. No, of course not. It's not over. <laughs> but really, it is that simple, right? It, I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, well, I know that, JR, but what is it? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It's more to it than that. So I'm going to take you through all the steps. I did a screen capture of going through all these steps, and we're going to post this. Uh, what is jo what is Jose saying there, Jessica? She's going to be answering some of your questions. He wants to know if you're going to get the secret away for free. Yes, it's free. Not going to cost you a thing, Jose. Not even going to ask you for money, nothing. I will not ask you for a dime on this call. This is just for you guys, okay? All right, so let's move on. Let's figure out what it is and what we're doing here. Here's the big trick. It's all about the audience. Okay, now I want you to think about this for a second. Let's say you got a pretty good offer, um, but you put it in front of the wrong people. In other words, you're selling pet supplies to people who don't have pets. How well do you think that's going to go over? Not going to go over very well, is it? But let's say that you're selling pet supplies for Doberman Pinschers and you put it in front of only people who just got a puppy Doberman Pinscher. Do you think you're going to do better off? Of course you will. So what we're going to talk about today is how to get these incredible audiences. And they're not going to be like you think. It's not going to be just going out there going, well, this interest and that interest and they like this page. It's not going to be anything like that. This is going to probably surprise you how we're going to go about doing this. So let's talk about the kinds of traffic you have first, because you're going to, you know, when you start your business and, you know, just really for, from that point forward, you're always going to have to deal with some cold traffic. Uh, and I'm going to explain to you what cold traffic is in just one second. Uh, and then you're going to have warm traffic. 
Okay. And I'm going to explain to you what that is, but I want you to, you know, think about these different types of categories. Uh, then you're going to have some semi hot traffic. Okay. And we'll talk about what that is. And then you're going to have hot traffic. Okay. So before we can really look at these audiences and all this stuff, let's define what each one of these is. Okay. So the first one is cold traffic. So a little picture of your audience there. That's pretty much what they're doing. They don't care. All right. They don't care. Um, they don't know they even have a problem, okay? They don't even know they need a sweater for their Doberman Pinscher. They have no idea about that. The next one here is they don't know who you are, okay? So not only do they not know they don't have a problem, they don't even know who you are, and they don't know there's a solution to keeping their dog warm. They don't, they don't know their sweater's even made for those dogs, okay? So this is some super cold traffic. Okay, so what's warm traffic? Well, warm traffic, they're a little bit more interested, okay? They know they have a problem, okay? They probably know they have a problem, uh, but they don't know who you are. Or those could be flipped around. They could you know, know who you are, but don't know they have a problem, but they're warm because of one of those things. Uh, they may or may, may not know that there is a solution, okay? But they're a little bit better off than those people that were just totally cold to everything, okay? So what's semi-hot traffic? Semi-hot traffic is they know they have a problem, okay? And they may even know who you are, okay? Which is, which is good, right? We're doing better now. They may have even interacted with you. Maybe they went to your website. You know, they haven't bought anything from you, uh, but maybe they liked your page or something like that. But how are you going to know? Well, they like your page. Okay, that's a cool thing. Maybe they filled out some form that you have. Uh, maybe they opted in for something that you have. Maybe they attended a webinar like you guys are doing right now. Um, and maybe they made a phone call. Okay, so there's been some type of interaction with you right they may have even requested information from you either on one of those forms or a phone call or whatever now what's hot traffic okay these people love you okay they think you're the best thing in the world they know they got a problem they know that you got the products they probably have already bought products from you man these people are the hottest of the hot hot and we're going to talk about how to get more of these people because that's what we want to do right so we all start at the same spot our piggy bank kind of looks like this right we don't have any customers, we don't have any likes, we're unknown, there's no base to draw from. And you know, this is the one thing I hear new people say all the time, you don't understand, JR, I don't have anything going on. And I, I love to look at them and say, well, no, I do understand because it's exactly where I started. And guess what? That's exactly where everybody started. Unless somebody handed you a business, you know, we all start at the same place. You know, we all start without knowledge, we all start without customers. We're, we're an unknown, okay? And that's not a big deal, it really isn't. So I hear this all the time. I don't have money for ads, okay? I can't, I can't spend any money on ads. I just can't do it. I'm, I'm totally broke. I can't buy lunch today. I'm bad off. And I don't want to do any type of content whatsoever. Now, if you fall into both of these categories, you need to get off this call now because I can't do anything to help you. There's nothing I can do to help you, okay? If you can't spend any money for ads, if you can't handle five or 10 bucks and you don't want to put forth any effort to do content, then how are you expecting to get a customer? You can't do it. But I, I, you know, a matter of fact, that's a big Google search term is how to start a business with no money. You can't. If anybody's telling you that you can start a business with no money, I mean, it's almost impossible. I mean, even if you're just going to do content, you're going to do social media, you got to pay for the internet. You got to have a, a phone or a laptop or something. So if you fall into both those categories, leave, just leave. Because another thing is, our, our webinar is full today, and if you leave, you'll make spot for somebody who wants to do something, okay? But if you're intelligent enough to know that you got to spend some money uh, and that you may have to do some content, then stick in here because you're going to get some really good information in a second. All right, so don't run ads alone. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're just always running ads <clears throat> and you never put out any content whatsoever, you know, you're not going to be able to build an audience. It's not going to happen. You really have to do both of these, okay? Um, and I, you know, this is, this is what people do. You know, I think they just run out of things to complain about after a while. People will search you if you create content. Okay. They'll do it. So let's say you create a piece of content or I do <clears throat> some of you on this call and you can answer and you put, put stuff in the comments because Jessica is monitoring all that. You probably searched me online and said, well, what does he know about, you know, doing e-commerce? Has he ever sold any products? You know, does he have any videos out there? What is, and you'll find stuff. You'll find stuff on YouTube on me. You'll find stuff on Google on me. Um, because I know I have to put it out. I've got to, I've got to prove to you guys, Hey, I've done something. I know, I know something. Okay. Um, 
people will wait for consistency too. So you can't put out like two or three great pieces of content or run some fantastic ads for a week and then not do it for six months because people will not like that. Okay. You can't do that. It's just, it's, it's going to be an ongoing thing. It's not a one and done thing and people need time. Okay. So, you know, you may run an ad and they may read some of your content um, and then they may wait to see what else you're going to do. Okay. And if you don't do anything else, they're not going to buy from you. So you need to have, some period of time where you're going to convince them and this has to be done every single day you know i do these calls once a week on fridays and uh i'm probably going to do them forever as long as i can because people like them they get information i get customers out of them they go hey i learned something hey what else do you have so yeah there's there's a reason for me doing this stuff and there's a reason for me giving you good information um so what are the top ways to target better because that's what we want to do we want to start targeting our customers better okay First way is to upload your list of buyers, okay? So here's how this works. If you have some buyers, and I know some people are already going, well, I don't have any buyers yet. Hang on, we got stuff for you. Um, but if you do have buyers, you can upload them to Facebook. And we're gonna be talking all about Facebook ads today. So if you're here for Google AdWords, you're in the wrong place, okay? You need to get off the airplane. That's not where we're going. Um, but what we're going to be doing here is uploading them to Facebook, but for Facebook to work properly. And I'm going to mention this in just a second too. When I go through the ads, um, you got to have at least hundred people from one country. Okay. So if you've got 50 from Brazil and 29 from Mexico, you can scratch off those two countries. You can't do it. You got to have a hundred people from one country. Okay. Next thing you can do, you can target people who visited your page. Now, we're going to do this through uh, pixeling these pay people. Um, and the way it works is when they visit your page, they get this pixel put on them. And when they're logged into Facebook, which like 95% of the people stay logged into Facebook, um, they're going to see your ads based on the fact that they were pixeled you know, on your page. Um, we're also going to target people based on how long they were on our page. Now, that's a pretty cool one because you know you do have people that come to your page and it was a mistake. They get there and they go, oh, I didn't mean to come here. I'm not interested in survival food and what JR has got. Let me get off of here. So we don't want to send ads to those people, right? We don't want to do that. Um, or they may have gotten there and they go, you know what? I don't like the looks of his survival food and I don't like him. I'm out of here. I don't want to target those people, right? If they don't like me, why would I want to do that? Next thing we can do is we can target people who bought from you, okay? Now that list up at the top could be buyers. It could be opt-in people. It could be all kinds of stuff. Uh, and they're also going to target people who didn't buy from you. You say, well, that's easy. Nobody's bought from me yet. <laughs> it's not exactly what I mean. Uh, these are people who maybe started to buy from you and, you know, left the checkout or something like that. We can target those people too. All right. So what I'm going to do is I want to take you into, you know, a little sequence here. And I recorded this a little earlier. So I'm going to crank up the volume here. Uh, but this is, this was just done yesterday. And I want to show you how we're going to do all of those steps there. Now, if you have questions, I'm going to be monitoring uh, in the question box there. So, you know, feel free to put questions in and so will Jessica. So let's get this started. And OK, guys, now what I want to show you is one of the best ways that you can have successful ads. And of course, the best way to have a successful ad is to make sure you get it in front of the right people. So what I've done here is this is a list of people who purchased my book and I want to run an ad and get more people to buy the book. So what better group of people to look at than people who already bought the book? So it's pulled in their first, last name and email and all that good stuff here. But what I'm really concerned about is the country. And the reason I'm concerned about the country is to use a list of buyers or, you know, visitors or opt-ins or whatever, you have to have at least 100 of those particular people for Facebook to be able to make an audience of. And the bigger the list, the better. So if you had, you know, 10,000 and you made a lookalike audience, that lookalike audience is going to be far better than if you had 150, obviously, because it gives more data to Facebook so they can figure this stuff out. So the first thing we have to do is get this all sorted here because I want to take out countries that don't matter. I'm just going to see how many people we got here. This has got a few hundred. Looks like uh, this is the past few weeks people have bought the book. Um, I'll get to the end here. It's got about a little over 600. Okay, get back up here. So a little over 600 people, 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and sort these people by country. Now, there's two things here that my particular program does. It looks at the IP country and it looks at the actual country here. So it looks like there's more data in the IP country. So I'm just going to click in here. And keep in mind, it's also going to sort the sort row, but we're not going to worry about that. And I'm going to click here. You can do the drop down if you want to do ascending or descending. And I'm going to do descending since the United States is what I'm interested in. And I click on it. So now it's sorted. And if you notice, it does have the United States at the top here. And I can scroll down here. Let me take a look. Now I've gotten into, whoops, the United Kingdom. And I can see that there. So I might as well take this out since that's not going to matter to me. Uh, the United Kingdom on down to here. And I will, whoops, grab that again. And then I'm going to delete these. And then I'm going to look through a little bit more. There's, uh, I don't care about the IP. I picked up our headers there. So we have that in Australia. I don't want to get rid of any of the ones that don't have a country by it. Okay. So for some reason, you know, this IP address was blocked and couldn't see. But Facebook will figure out all that. So I'm not even worried about that. And as I scroll through here, all the rest of them, it looks like uh, do not have a country. But I promise you, these look like some uh, American names here, Dean, Barry, Robert. These are probably American people. And Facebook will be able to figure that out by just looking at their email address because they have all those other data points that they can match. So what I'm going to do now is now that I've got this all sorted, is I'm going to save it. Let me go up here real quick. And I'm going to click Save As uh, Book Buyer List. And I'm going to put 600 just so I remember what that is. And I'll put that into the downloads. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to my Facebook Ads Manager. So let me get over there real quick. Okay, so what I've done here is I've selected one of my ad accounts. I'm going to go to the three little lines right here. Go down to All Tools. And then what I want to do is I want to go over here to Audiences. Okay? Now once I get into Audiences, what I'm going to do first off, is I'm going to create a custom audience, okay? I have to create a custom audience first before I can create my lookalike. Then I'm gonna click on customer file, and I'm gonna say add customers from your own file and copy and paste, or import from MailChimp. Now, why in the heck Facebook has just MailChimp out of all the email providers? I have no idea. Maybe they own MailChimp and I just don't know it, but whatever. So we're gonna do it from the file here, and then I'm gonna go find that file, so I'm going to click Upload File, and I put that in a download folder here, and it was Buyer's List 600, so I'm going to open that up. So I'm now importing that particular list into Facebook, but Facebook still needs some help. It looks at these and it says, Do Not Upload. Well, this looks like a first name to me, so I'm going to go here and click First Name. That way I can tell Facebook what this is. It says, Do Not Upload Here. These look like a bunch of last names. So I'm going to say this is the last name. So you got to kind of help Facebook along. Uh, what else do we have here? Email it figured out. It looks like the emails match up. And you want to look over here, make sure this makes sense. It says phone numbers. Those do look like phone numbers. Uh, this looks like a bunch of IP numbers. We don't care about this. This here looks like the United States. Let me see if they picked that up from another location here. Well, they did not. So. That is the U.S., so I want to pick country right there, so I got that. And this is an address. Now, if you look in here, they don't really have address. They just have zip, city, and state, so we don't care about that part. Right here, this looks like a city, so we're going to click city right there. And let's see here. That looks like a zip code to me, so we're going to pick the zip code. The thing is... With the more points of data you have, the better off your um, lookalike audience is going to be. Uh, and this looks like a state to me, so I'm going to grab state. That's Texas, Pennsylvania, Michigan. I can see those are states. There's nothing there, nothing there, so I'm pretty good. So I've got all these data points right down here. Those are the eight that are mapped and will be uploaded. So I'm going to upload and create, and it says uploading right now. Now, once you do this, it can take a few minutes to a few hours to actually 
um, get all this data in here. So what I'm going to do is I want to create a lookalike audience from these people. So I'm going to click right here. And it's going to pull from JRF Buyers List 600. And the location I want is the United States. That's what I'm going after. If I spelled it right. There we go. So there's the United States. And then I'm going to create an audience, okay? Now, what it's going to say first off is the buyer 600 list is not available. And it's going to say that this lookalike is updating the audience. Now, I went in here earlier and uh, did another one. And this one was people who saw a book page but didn't buy. Okay, fewer than 1,000, but I put those in there. And then I created a lookalike from that. Uh, and this lookalike audience here, and let's take a look at this. It gave me 3 million people, which is pretty amazing, right? And I also did one down here, uh, JRF Buyers List. This is the same book people right here. Sometimes this will say not available. I don't know why it does that, but it will, and it's just inaccurate, so don't worry about it. And then I created a lookalike of those people right there. So now what it's going to do is I can use these audiences to run ads, and these ads will go out to people who look just like the people who already bought from me. That's pretty cool stuff because it knows about their, you know, incomes, their likes, their dislikes, where they live, their regions and all that. And the more data points that Facebook can pull together like that, the better your lookalike audience is going to be. So let's look at a couple other things we can do in here because there's a lot of things we can do. And understand when you first start running ads, all you're doing is spending money to get data. You're really not going to be real successful as far as selling stuff because you don't have it targeted down enough. Um, you essentially, at some point, want to get to where you're doing lookalike audiences of people who bought from you. That's, that's, I mean, one of the best audiences you can get. But there's a lot of other kinds of audiences, too, that you can do. And I'd like to take a look at those real quick. So let's go up here. And let me click here. And I'm going to create uh, a custom audience, okay? And let's look at some of the other custom audiences we can do. Now, one of the really cool ones is also website traffic, okay? So let's click on that. And we can look at all the different things that we can do. Now, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have your pixel installed, okay? You've got to have that pixel on your website. If you don't do that, then, of course, Facebook can't help you out. Now, here's the really cool thing right here. I want to look at, you can pick all website visitors, but I don't want to do that. I want to pick ones who visited a specific web page. So let's say uh, I'm selling my book. And I want to target people who visited a particular page. Let's say it was the sales page for that book, okay? So I'm going to click on that one right there. And then let's go grab the sales page for the book. Okay, so I'm at the sales page for that book right now, okay? So what happens is I run ads, and the only way to really essentially get to this page is if you've seen one of my ads and you click on it, you're going to end up on this page. And if you notice, right up here, this is the URL for this particular page. So I'm going to grab this right here and copy it. Then I'm going to go back to my audiences here. So I don't want to just have contains. I don't want to have, you know, uh, doesn't contain. I want to have equals to, okay? So I'm going to put in here that particular page where the book is. So what this means is this is going to target people who have seen this page because they are, and, and you can do this in the last 30 days, 60, 90, whatever you do. These are the people I want, people who saw this page, okay? So now once I've done that, and I'm going to say uh, saw book page 30. Now why I'm putting 30 is because this is for people who saw it in the past 30 days. See there? But let's say I want to change it. I want to do 180, okay? So I'll well, put 180. So now what it's going to do is it's going to look at people who got tagged in the past 180 days. It's actually going to do this for me. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the audience. But I also want to refine this a little bit more. And I want to refine this by doesn't contain. Now, why would I say doesn't contain if I want to target all these people who've seen this page? Because what I want to do is I want to take out the people that bought the book. Now, how am I going to do that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to also put the page in here that they would see after they bought the book. So let's go grab that page. 
Okay, now where I'm at now is I'm at the page that people see after they buy my book. It says, thanks, check your email in the next five minutes for your book, okay? Now the only way they're gonna be able to see this page, the only way they're gonna know this URL is if they bought my book. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this URL right here, and I'm gonna go back to Facebook, and I'm gonna say, doesn't contain this, and I'm gonna put that URL there. Why? Because, uh, oh yeah, I wanna put that here, saw book page 180, didn't buy. Okay, so that's my audience. So it's gonna pull all the people in the past 180 days that actually saw my book offer page, but they didn't see my thank you page. So that tells me that these people did not buy. So now I'm only sending this to non-buyers. If I just send them to the people who saw the page, I'm wasting my money because I'm sending it to people who bought, okay, and I don't want to. I don't want to target them anymore. They already bought, right? So I'm going to create this audience. And the audience is now created. Okay. So now I've got an audience of these people that I can actually use, and I'll use that as one of the audiences in my ad set to target people. Pretty cool stuff. So the next thing you can do here is find new people similar to your existing users. Uh, best for creating, prospecting, lookalike audiences, that type of thing, or create an ad using this audience. So I'm creating this lookalike audience, and what I'm going to choose is, let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to select saw book page 180, didn't buy, right there. And then I'm going to go with United States, right here. And I'm going to create an audience. So right now it's populating that. Here's the people that didn't buy. And here's the actual audience right here. So that's some pretty cool stuff. So we can go after that. So what's the next category of people we can go after? Let's take a look here. And we're going to do another custom audience, okay? And this one's going to be a little bit different. What I'm going to do with this one is this particular one, I'm going to do website traffic, okay? So let me click on this. And you know, we did the we did the specific web page right here, but here's a really cool one you can do, and you can do all website visits too. You can do visitors by time spent on your site. Now, what this is, is this is going to go after people that you know came to your site, but you know, some people that came to your site accidentally did it. I mean, they got there, they looked and they went, ah, wrong page. Or they looked at it and they said, I don't like this page, okay? So we don't even wanna you know, get involved with those people. So we're gonna do by time spent, okay? So when you go by time spent, you have a couple choices here. Now, the first one is the top 25%, the top 10%, or the top 5%. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna look at the top 5% of the people that spent the most amount of time. And then it's going to do the 10% of people that did the most amount of time and 25% of the people. So this would be your most targeted right here. So if I go with this 5%, and you know you should do this 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120, 180, so that you have all these different audiences and you'll figure out which one works best, but you do want to create these initially. So I'm going to say the top 5% in the past 180 days. So top 5% web visits, and I like to really write this out because I look at some of these audiences and it doesn't make any sense to me. So top 5% web visits in 180 days, okay? So that, that's pretty self-explanatory to me. And I'm gonna create an audience. And as you can see, you can have a lot of different audiences by doing this, okay? It says the custom audience was created, so I obviously had enough people come into the site, which is good. And then I'm gonna uh, do a custom audience. So. Now, what I did is I called it, what I call it down here, top 5% web visits, 180 days. So I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna go after United States, okay? And then I'm gonna create an audience. So what I've done now is I've got this top 5% web visits, and then I've got this lookalike audience, 1% top 5% web visits, 180 days. And what you're going to need to do is come back to this because it's not going to populate, you know, right away. It takes a little bit of time to do it. But by doing this, and I'm going to do 180 days, I'm going to do 90 days, I'm going to do 60, 30, 
I'm going to, after a while, build up a lot of people that are coming to the sites and a lot of look-alike audiences so I can expand this. Now, if you look down here, um, this one that I did earlier, uh, saw a book page but didn't buy. It's similar to the one we did up here. Okay, so if you look here, I've got this. Uh, I'm going to hover over it. It drives me nuts. Saw book page didn't buy. Those were those are real people. Okay, these are real people right here. And then I created a lookalike of those people. Saw book page didn't buy. Okay, look at this. Three million people. Okay, so I can now target three million people with that. And if I want to narrow that down later, that's fine. But it gives me a really good audience to start working from. So by doing these, you know, lookalike audiences, people who bought from you, people who didn't buy from you, but that were there, people who visited your page, okay, and didn't buy anything, or they saw a book page and didn't buy, there's so many things you can do here to create really good audiences. And the problem is most people don't do this. They just, you know, grab some audiences out there and they start running ads, which is fine in the beginning. And you have to do that in the beginning because you've got to get traffic to your site. But once you've got some traffic, once you've got some buyers, then you can start using these more high-level tools that Facebook gives you, and man, your results are so much better. I mean, just so, so much better because what you're essentially doing is you're putting your offer in front of people who are just like people who handed you money or who are just like people who thought about handing you money or are just like people who went to your web page and thought about giving you money, okay? So there's so many more groups that you can hit by doing this. And if you continue with just those, you know, really generalized audiences, you won't have near the results than if you do some of these lookalike audiences and you start targeting some of these people that visit your page. And you can directly market to these people who saw your page and didn't buy. So if, if this person saw my book page and didn't buy, I may, I may put an ad in front of them and say, hey, I saw you looked at my book, but you didn't buy it. Here's another opportunity to get it. And, you know, just have an ad that's like that with a picture of it, not too late to get the book. And it's going to hit these people right here. And it's just really an amazing way to market. And Facebook allows you to do this. Most people just don't do it. Those are some more ways you can increase your sales and head towards 10 times in your ad spend. That's the goal, right? We want to get a lot of money back for what we spend. Hope you enjoyed this. And I'll move on to the next part now. Okay, guys, who's got some questions? But, you know, before I get into all these questions, I want to cover a couple of things here. I saw in the news. The news what is it? Uh, let me look at a couple of these questions. Do the custom audience and lookalike audience need to be specific to a particular niche or are mixed store? Okay. All right. So that's kind of a, that's a two-part question. If you're doing a mixed store and you pixel people, you're going to have a whole bunch of different niches. It won't work as well. I mean, in fact, it won't work because in other words, if you're selling, you know, motorcycle equipment and pet supplies, you know, that's not really uh, an audience that you would want to pixel. So this is more for niche type stuff. Uh, for every customer, custom audience, do you need a minimum of a hundred individuals identified by the pixel? Um, do you know how many you have? Yeah, I know how many I got. I got. <laughs> Um, yeah, you have to, to target to do a lookalike audience. Now, this is for a lookalike. You have to have 100 per country. That doesn't mean that you have to have that to do your audience to upload it, but you aren't going to be able to do a lookalike without that. Um, do the custom audience and lookalike audience need to be specific? Okay, I did, I did that question, did that one. Somebody says, this is great. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, is the recording you just played available as a standalone? Uh, that way you don't have to play through full recording just to see that video. You know, I'm starting to chop up some of the stuff now and post it. So I, the answer is no, not, not at the second, but I will soon. Cause I just did that video yesterday. I wanted to be current. So anytime I'm doing stuff for you guys, I don't want to do a video that's you know three months old and then hit record. So you guys can you know see it. I don't want to do that. Um, I want to move on to something else guys. That's a little bit off the beaten path, but let's, let's go here for a second. Uh, and you feel free to ask questions because Jessica's still answering those over there. Um, I want to ask you a question, and you can put this in the comments. You can put it just to me or you can put it to everybody. I want to know what success is because everybody's always talking about success and being successful, blah, 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 blah. So what is success? I mean, what does it look like? <laughs> you know, it's really kind of hard to put your your 
head around what success is. Uh, and I'm going to throw a few things up here that, that people say is success. Okay. Um, the first one is money. Okay. So they say, well, if you've got money, you're successful. Um, I don't know if you guys watch the news that much. I've been really kind of surprised. I was really surprised this morning. Uh, a gentleman named Anthony Bourdain committed suicide. And I've watched him for years. Matter of fact, uh, Jessica and I have seen him in person. Uh, super, super talented guy. And he had a lot of money. Uh, and I would have never guessed that he would have committed suicide. He had money. And just a few days ago, Kate Spade, you guys know, uh, probably know. She's got, you know, a, a brand that's unbelievable. I know we've got a closet full of the stuff. Uh, but Kate Spade, you know, did all kinds of stuff from clothes to purses to all that. She committed suicide. Okay. Um, so it kind of got me to thinking about this. Is fame success? Because both of those people um, you know, had money and they had fame. Okay. Hmm. Makes you think. What about celebrity? Is celebrity success? Well, they had all that, right? I mean, Kate Spade was famous. Um, matter of fact, she said to some other people she didn't want to tell anybody she was depressed because it would ruin her brand. That's kind of a sad situation, right? Uh, and you know, as far as Anthony Bourdain goes, you know, I would have never guessed he would have done that. But I mean, I knew he had a drug past and, you know, all that. So I thought maybe one day he could OD or something. I never thought he would intentionally do it, which was really surprising to me. Is it accomplishment? Okay. Well, if that's the case, you know, all, both of these people were accomplished people, right? And, and anybody's standard, they were accomplished. They, they did well. You know, and in this um, success thing we're looking at in internet business, you know, what, what does it really look like? You know, because, you know, there's people who have a lot more money than I do, and they sell a lot more online than I do. And there's people that have a lot less. Um, and, you know, if, if that was the judgment, then, you know, the, the highest, you know, people that makes the most amount of money, that would be a successful person would be, I guess, the happiest. <clears throat> I don't know. But I don't think it's any of that. Here's what I think it is. I think it's contentment. <clears throat> I think it's contentment because, you know, I've seen people that have a whole lot less than me. You know, I've been to some foreign countries. I was in Thailand in uh, December and I saw some people that had a whole lot less than me and they were the happiest people I've ever seen. We're just totally content, okay? So we want to kind of get at this content thing. And I'm going to, like I said, get a little off the beaten track. Uh, somebody's saying it's an individual thing. It is, it is. Um, but so what is contentment? I looked it up. <laughs> and the definition was terrible. It said the state of being contented. No kidding. <laughs> Satisfaction and ease in mind. So I started to look a little bit further. Now I'll tell you, in the U.S., I heard this is an interesting statistic. There were more people that committed suicide in the greatest country in the world, they say. You know, I don't know. I guess there's more opportunities. But um, more people that committed suicide than got killed in car wrecks last year. It's amazing. There were more people that committed suicide than were murdered last year in the U.S. So you know, what the heck? What is that? What does that mean? Because we're all we're all. I mean, you know, we're, we got our niches and all that stuff, but we're all just we pretty much want to be happy, right? Whatever that is, whatever that looks like. But I think sometimes we chase the wrong thing. So they did this survey of old people in nursing homes and they were going to find out, you know, the secret in life and all that kind of great stuff. And they asked them a series of questions. But what it turned out to be is an entirely different report than what they thought, because there was one thing that all old people said in every single nursing home. They all said this one thing, okay? And it wasn't related to success or anything like that, but it was related to regret. And here's the regret. I wish I hadn't worried so much. Hmm, that's something to think about. So the biggest thing that old people who are nearing the end of their life think that I wasted so much time worrying about crap, you know? Is that what you're doing? You know, I think I think it's a very paralyzing thing, you know, to worry all the time. So I want to dig into that a little bit deeper because here's our hope here is if we can handle some of this stuff for you guys, you know, I can teach you the technical stuff, but if you're all caught up in your head and you're not doing anything because you're so worried about everything all the time, then all this technical knowledge really won't do you any good. You know, no one had to, you know, build audiences is great, but what if you're just so worried all the time about stuff that you can't even sit down and do it? What if we could fix that a little bit today? So that's what we're working on here. So what does worry cause? You know, 
first off, you got to say, well, you know, is it constructive? Well, it causes fear. Okay. When you worry about stuff, you tend to start fearing things. Okay. Uh, and that's not good. Right. It causes anxiety. Anxiety is a terrible feeling, right? Kind of jumpy inside. Don't feel right. Not comfortable. It causes health issues. It's been proven actually that if you worry a lot, it can affect your health. Right. And if you get bad health, there's not much you can do at all. And it can cause addiction because what you're trying to do with that addiction is get rid of all those problems that you got, right? You know, that worry. It can also, this is the bad one. This is a really bad one. Worry causes procrastination. And if you procrastinate, you don't get things done. So let's look at this a little bit further. And it also causes sleep issues. Okay. So if you're not sleeping, you know, and you're procrastinating and you got addictions and your health's bad and you got anxiety and fear. Oh my God. Makes it a whole lot worse, doesn't it? We don't want this to happen, right? Maybe we can fix a little bit of this. Maybe it's not so tough. So here's the question. How can you stop worrying? What can you do? Well, you know, I've, I've read a lot of statistics and I read one time that 87% of the things you worry about will never happen. They're never going to happen. They're not going to happen. Okay. And then another like 5% of the things are going to happen, but there's nothing you can do about it. Right. So now we're up to like 92%. So that leaves, you know, 8% of things that may happen and you may be able to do something about them. So as you can see, it's a lot of wasted effort on a daily basis. It can, it can just take its toll on you. Okay. And I'm not immune to this, right? Everybody has these problems. You know, it's not like, you know, some people out there just don't worry. Everybody's got it, but it's how you handle it when it comes about that's going to help you, okay? So I'm going to give you a few things. First thing I would tell you nowadays that's causing a lot of worry for people is kick your online addiction. You know, I got a, a Starbucks uh, not too far from the house, and there's an older gentleman that's in there, and he's got his iPhone plugged in, and he's kind of stumbling around. He's in there every morning. I, I don't like going to the Starbucks because he's there. And he's got Rush Limbaugh turned up full blast on his phone. And, you know, no offense to Rush Limbaugh, but his job is to get people riled up. And he gets this old man so riled up, he starts screaming at his phone and yelling and elbowing people next to him and say, did you hear that? Do you know what's going on here? And he's so addicted to that that it just ruins his morning every day. And he does it to himself. It's crazy. Craziness. Also, be mindful, okay? Stop and look around for a second, okay? You're so worried about what just happened or what you did or what's going to happen on down the road or what if this doesn't work out or what am I going to do? How about just stopping and looking around and going, hey, I'm healthy and I'm sitting here right now. And if you're not healthy, you can do something about that, right? If you're mindful and you're overweight, you can go to the gym or do something. But just stop and look what you got going on right here, right now, because you don't want to be one of those people in the nursing home that says, yeah, I spent my life worrying, what'd you do? All right, so then accept the worry. So sometimes you get mad at yourself, you go, man, I shouldn't be worrying again, I shouldn't be worrying. It's okay if you do it, but just stop it and move on, just stop. You know, I just listened to something which I would suggest you looking up online, Mel Robbins, who's a CNN contributor, uh, the five second rule, uh, and she did a TED talk, which is just phenomenal, uh, but I highly recommend you listening to it. But she says, just <clears throat> count five, four, three, two, one, and just do whatever you think you should do. Quit worrying about it. Quit thinking, what if I look bad? What if it goes wrong? What if I lose money? Just count backwards from five and do it. Quit the worry. Write your worries down. If you think they're really, really that important. So let's say you got a money worry or you got a health worry or, you know, extra, whatever it is, write it down and get it out of your head. There's no sense in thinking the same thought over 500 times a day. I assure you, if you worry all day long, you're not going to cure cancer. It's just not going to happen, right? You just think this thing over and over and over and over. You just wear yourself down. You're exhausted by the end of the day, and you've got nothing accomplished. Okay? And then cut yourself some slack. Everybody does it. I worry. You know, my wife worries. Everybody worries. But the point is how much you do it and what you do about it when you realize it. Okay? Uh, you gotta, you gotta stop and look at these things, you know, when, you know, when, when I started my business, you know, I, I sold products from another company and that company couldn't supply them anymore. And, and I had taken in a lot of money and, you know, I said, well, do I worry about that? Or do I try to come up with my own products? And if I hadn't come up with my own products, 
you know, I wouldn't have my own products. <laughs> so it was a good thing. But, you know, initially I was like worried. OK, but what do you do with that worry? Do you make some change? Keep your hands busy. This sounds silly, right? But if you ever notice when you're worried, you kind of just sit in the corner and do nothing. You know, years ago in uh, mental institutions, what they would do with people is they didn't have the medications we do nowadays, which I'm not saying are good or bad, but they knew that if they kept their minds busy, um, that uh, they wouldn't, you know, have all these bad thoughts. And the only way to keep their minds busy was to keep their hands busy. So they had tiled floors. I read about this. Sounds cruel, but it did help. They would give them a toothbrush and tell them to clean the grout between the tiles. And while they were doing this thing, right, this little action with their hands, guess what? They didn't sit there and worry. They weren't all freaked out. So you know, do something with your hands, you know, type or a hobby, whatever it is, whatever you want to do, keep your hands busy. And then make time for meditation. Now, this isn't some kind of weird thing. This is just something where you sit down and clear your thoughts. That's, that's my best definition of meditation is just stop for a second. Just stop. You know, you could do this for three minutes or five minutes. Do it once a day and just say, okay, I'm not going to worry. I'm going to worry for the rest of the day, 99% of the time. If that's what you want to do, do it. <laughs> I don't suggest it. But do take out a time for yourself because all of that worry is really pointless. You know, it's action that matters. So let's get into that for a second. Worry kills action and worry causes procrastination. These are the two things you want. You want action, right? Because that's what's going to get things done. And you don't want to procrastinate because when you do, you feel bad about it. And what procrastination basically is, is you're trying to protect yourself from pain because you think whatever you're trying to get ready to do is going to be painful, right? So what do we do about that? Action. That's the only thing you can do. And that goes back to that five, four, three, two, one thing. Just do something. Do the ad. Build the audience. Go to the gym. You know, whatever it is, turn off the TV but have some action. And if you do action, it's going to kill the worry. That's pretty cool stuff, right? That's pretty easy to do. It just actually physically do something. Action is the opposite of procrastination. Pretty simple stuff. But we don't always stop and think about this stuff. You know, we gather all this information and we learn all this stuff and we go to all these courses, but we're in our own head. And that's really, really difficult. I'm starting to get some really cool comments in here too, guys. I'm I'm not ignoring you guys, but I'm I am in the moment, right? Trying to share this information with you. Um, and I just want to I want to look at some of these things here. I want to get my my slides here. Okay, that was my last slide, so I can start looking at these. Um, this one person, I'm not going to say their name, uh, had cancer three times and never worried. Only worried the first time at 26 years old, but that was it for me and my children. Okay, so this is is meant to be, it will happen regardless. So do what I can and hope for the best and expect that it could be worse uh, than it is to learn to accept life. That's very true because stuff's gonna happen to you. Somebody's saying, thank you. This is you guys, man. You're in your own heads right now. You're starting to think about stuff that's good. Uh, as long as you live, I'm, read, I'm reading comments, guys. I'm not putting anybody's name. Uh, as long as you live as good as you can, things will work themselves out. Uh, things you can't change, can't do, and you just move on. And, you know, I bring this up because, you know, I, I brought up those two celebrities that took their own lives that probably had all the things that all of us are striving for, right? We're striving for that money and that security, and they had it all. But if you get all that stuff, and I think, I think this happens to a lot of celebrities, they're just like you. They go, well, I'm going to be super happy if I get a lot of money and I get a lot of fame and I become a celebrity and then they get there and then they're not and they go, uh oh, then that's not it. That's not what I was looking for. Cool. Oh, oh, this is not good because that's exactly what I thought I needed. And that's when it hits them. So I think it's a whole lot better, guys, because I just know you're going to make a ton of money online. And that's great. But I think it's a whole lot better if you get in your head now. And realize it's really about contentment, you know, kind of be happy with what you got. And, you know, this is this is my Friday day. So we go off for lunch. And, you know, that's that's a really fun thing for us. We really, really like it. You know, that's that's what we like to do. It makes us content. Go off to lunch on Friday. It's something to look forward to. I know that no matter what happens during the week, we'll be able to do that. OK, so yeah, I'm getting a lot of comments. Let me, let me put some of these in here. Uh, set smaller goals for yourself each day. That's great, Stephanie. I love that. That's very true. And you know what? A smaller goal 
you know, I, I had a goal one time where I could ride in first class of an airplane. And when I did it, I was like, check that off the list. That was pretty cool. It doesn't have to be, I'm going to cure cancer, right? Um, be careful what you think about, Debbie's saying. That's very true because your brain could do some wicked things. And when you have those bad thoughts, you know, that's that's when you got to just stop. Get back in your head, meditate, stop for a second. Acceptance is the best way to not get depressed. That's right. You're going to have issues. Some of your ads won't work. Some of your products won't work. You know, you're going to have health things. All these things happen in life. But don't let it stop you, okay? And I think one of the biggest obstacles I see for people not doing well online is, you know, they they think they won't do well and they try a little bit and it doesn't do well. And they're like, oh, my gosh, I can't do this. You can do this. Uh, keep trying. Keep doing. I've had so many failures. I've had so many ads that don't work. I mean, goodness gracious. But I get on to the ones that do work. And that's what you got to do. So I don't have anything else for today. I, I, I hope you don't mind. I got a little off tangent today. Um, but, uh, I just thought it's kind of necessary because if you guys get in here and do all this stuff and, uh, what's David saying here for every celebrity that commits suicide, there are multiple ordinary people doing the same. That's right. And it's going to get worse. Well, I don't know about that. Get to school, go get a job, work hard. Yes, that's true. And it's all about action, isn't it, David? It's all about action. So guys, I would say take today. Um, meditate for three minutes when you get off the call. Just stop. Just clear your head, right? Sit down. Clear your head. Write out your action plan, whatever you're going to do, and count five, four, three, two, one, and just do it. Simple enough, right? All right. So, uh, yes, I'm glad you enjoyed the session there, Marissa. I, I feel honored that you guys showed up today. And we're going to go catch lunch now. Uh, so look for us online. There will be some pictures. I don't know where we're going. Uh, thank you, Joy. I appreciate you being here. Um, that's right. Life is good. That's right. Very true. Thank you so much, Joy. And uh, when we take our lunch, if you haven't been here before, we take some pictures. We say hi to you guys. So uh, look me up online if you'd like, uh, you know, friend us or whatever. And uh, I will see you guys very soon. Jessica, would you like to say a little bit of goodbye? Yes. Have a great weekend, guys. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.